Hi there, my name is Pamela and I breed British Shorthair Cats in Perth, Western Australia. I've been breeding and exhibiting my cats since 2004 and I'm even a cat show judge. I'm passionate about the cat fancy and I want to share my knowledge and experiences with you so that you can enjoy your hobby as much as I do. That's what the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast is all about. In this series, I'm taking a moment to answer some of the most regular cat breeding questions I get asked every day. Hopefully the answers will help you too. I'm also covering some topics that are important to new cat breeders so that you can start out on the right foot. Some of the episodes are scripted and some of them are off the cuff. The audio is both good and bad. But the main thing is the information and I'm sharing it in whatever way I can with you in mind. Well, this podcast is going to be one that's pretty practical. I'm going to tell you some tips um, to do with identifying your kittens because I got asked this question recently and I do get asked quite a bit and it pops up on different forums that I'm on and there's some different ways to do it, some things I'd recommend and some things I'd recommend you don't do. But let's talk first about why you might want to separate your kittens out and identify them separately. Now, if you're like me, um, you might have a lot of different kittens born in every litter. I breed a lot of colours, which is a bit unusual for a British short hair breeder. Traditionally, everybody's just breeding blue, blue, blue and blue. But I tend to have a lot of different colours in my litters. But what happens is I'll often get a lot of the same colours. So I might get two red bicolour males or I might get two lilac females. And when that happens, there's various reasons why you want to know the difference between them. Now, the first thing is because you're weighing them as baby kittens. I don't do this very often. In fact, I I can't think of the last time I weighed a baby kitten because for me, when you've been breeding for quite a while, you can just tell by looking at them to know how they're doing in terms of their weight gain or not. And you can tell when a kitten might not be thriving just by picking it up and feeling it. So that comes with experience. At the beginning of your breeding journey, you're probably weighing your kittens um, the same time every day is a good idea. You've probably got a list of them and you're weighing them and writing down how much each one weighs. Now that's really great, but the problem arises when you can't tell them apart. If you're lucky and you have a litter that's all different colors, or maybe you've got long hair and short hair in your breed, or maybe you've got curly and straight hair in your breed, maybe you've got things that you can tell them apart. Um, But if they're the same, that's when you run into a bit of difficulty. Now I'm normally okay because along with all the colors that I breed, I also breed by colors. I breed the with whites. And that means that most of the time it it would be really unusual to get two bi colors that are exactly, exactly the same in a litter. Uh, that would be perfection actually or they'd probably be both really badly marked I don't know but what we're looking for is their perfect inverted V on their face and sometimes I might note down that one has high V and one has low V because one's got it higher up the face and one's got it lower down the face or maybe I've got chin spot or maybe I've got you know the two I recently had two red red um bicolor males born in your maker's litter and I put down for them one had two spots on its back and the other one had one spot so when I wrote them down I wrote one back spot two back spot and I knew which one was which that's a good way to do it there's often something that that you can you can find that's different between those kittens but if you're someone that breeds say Russians most of your kittens unless you're breeding the rarer black and white ones you will have blue 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 and more blue and that's what I have if I do a blue to blue mating unless they're carrying chocolate or cinnamon um, I'll have all blue kittens and that's when it gets a bit tricky because if you do want to be weighing them you want to make sure you're putting the weights down for the right kittens Um, and later on there's other reasons why you want to know which ones which as well part of uh, promoting your kittens and getting them sold is that you'll be sharing videos and pictures of them and if you have um, a waiting list of people what tends to happen is that when you've got people waiting they will want the kittens pretty much as soon as they're born and they might want to choose based off that they might want to choose them when they first come out now it's okay if you've got someone that was waiting on um, for example I had a, a lovely couple they had a cat from me a black cat from me and he passed away of old age and then they got a blue kitten from me and then about a year later they decided to get another kitten and they decided to have another black one 
So he waited for a black male to be born. And the moment, the day after he was born, he was their kitten. They just said, yep, definitely we want that one. So they didn't need to come and meet him. I didn't need to come meet them because they'd already had cats and kittens from me. Um, and they didn't need to meet him to know they were quite confident that he was going to be the right kitten from them because the other ones that had from me had been great. And so he was adopted from the day he was born. Now, um, when you have people choosing their kittens at that point, they're choosing them before they're coming out to meet them. You still need to know which one's which because later on you're going to know which one they actually chose. And even if they do come out to your house, if there's three blue kittens running around or three white kittens running around or three classic um, black classic tabby kittens running around and they say, I really like that one. That one over there is the one that I like. I like the temperament and the look of that one. You need to be able to mark that kitten in some way so that they get that kitten later on. And that's where it can be a bit tricky. And you need to um, identify them in some way, shape or form. So that's something that can happen as well. Um, and the easiest thing to do, um, a lot of people think, is to just put something around their necks. And I've seen people do this right from the moment the kittens come out. Um, I find that choosing whether or not they're a boy or a girl is a lot easier when they're first born. I struggle later on. I'm always taking kittens to the vets and saying when they get their first vaccination, I think this is a boy, but can you check for me and finding out it's a girl? So you can tell it's a lot easier when they first come out. You can tell then, but once they've dried off, it's a bit hard. And But some people will mark them, will put um, collars around them at that point because they want to know which one they are and they'll put a green collar and a pink collar and a red collar. Um, or they'll use things that like hair elastics. So I see this a lot where people have put a hair elastic around a kitten, especially around a baby kitten. Now that might not be a problem for the baby kitten in terms of if it gets stuck on something, the elastic's gonna stretch, it's gonna go over its head, it's gonna be okay. But the problem I have with the elastics is not the kitten, it's with the mums. If the mum gets that elastic off and then starts playing with it and chews it, then you're in big trouble. I tell everyone that gets kittens from me, make sure that you don't leave hair elastics around. Make sure that if the male comes and it's got a lucky band around it, you take the lucky band off and put it in the bin because they're very dangerous for cats in terms of ingesting them and getting a blockage and then having um, having to have surgery to have it removed. And very, very dangerous. So I'm not worried about the kittens having the elastics on them, but I'm worried about the adults being able to um, ingest them if they get them off the kitten. So I'm not a fan of the elastic hair tie for the kittens. I'm also not a fan of ribbons, and I see this a bit as well, where people will tie a ribbon around the kitten's neck and put a little knot in it, and then that kitten's marked with the blue ribbon, and that one's marked with the pink ribbon, and they write that down so that they can weigh them and keep track of them. I don't love that either, and I don't love that because the ribbon is not stretchy, and that means that as the kittens get older, especially if you've seen my... Um, I have a video on YouTube that describes how I set up my kit, my kittens birthing areas and my cats go into a cage and their kittens have their they have their kittens in a big plastic um, crate in the cage now when the kittens come out and start toddling around and get a bit you know get a bit older and they can start climbing they will often climb the sides of the cage if there's something there for them to get caught up on next thing you know you've got a kitten that's stuck on the cage and it's dangling and it can't get its neck out and you've lost that kitten so I don't love ribbons for that reason, but I also don't love them for another reason. And if you've been an exhibitor for a while, you would have seen this. I've seen this as a steward and I've seen this as a judge. Every now and again, someone's kitten will start playing with its um, ribbons on its show cage curtains. So we use ribbons to hold the curtains in a show cage and they're really dangly and the kittens will grab them and start playing with them. And then they'll start chewing on them. And the thing about ribbons, this is why, referring to another video, I have a video on my YouTube channel about making curtains and I talk in that video about how you have to cut them at an angle and I actually sometimes seal mine with heat as well because the kittens chew on them and the thing about ribbons is when it frays, a big string will come out of it, a big long string. And once a cat is eating a string, it can't pull it out. It has no option but to keep eating it because it's just got to go down and down and down. It can't pull it out doesn't have thumbs um it just can't do it so when they uh, get a ribbon like that the ribbon will just keep going and going and going and next thing you know um you've got them having a problem with their gut and a blockage again it can pull tight in their gut and it can actually cause damage to their intestines 
So the kitten could do that, but also mum could do that as part of her grooming if she gets hold of that bit of ribbon and then she's suddenly eating, 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 eating and she's eating this ribbon and she's in trouble. So I wouldn't recommend using a ribbon either. There are also things like little kitten collars made of Velcro, but I'm gonna to talk to you about, about them in a minute because I do use them, but I use them in a specific situation. I don't like to use them all the time on kittens because just like all the other things I've talked about, um, the ribbons, they don't stretch. So again, a kitten could get caught up on something and then it's dangling and it can't, it, there's no breakaway collar, there's no stretch in it, the kitten's stuck. So I don't like them for permanently using them on baby kittens either. So what do I recommend? Well, there's a couple of things that I can tell you that I know other people do, and then I'll tell you what I actually do. So uh, I know some people use scissors and they might cut a little bit of fur off one of the kittens. You might cut a little bit of fur off say a shoulder, um, somewhere where it's gonna grow back okay. Um, this is when you're doing it quite early, when you're still weighing them, when you need to know the difference, um, when you've got plenty of time for it to grow back. It's inconspicuous, but you know it's there, so you can do that. I think I have done this before. I think I actually took um, scissors and trimmed a little, um, just a little, uh, cut mark in um, the leg of that sounds terrible a <laughs> cut mark in the leg of one of the kittens um, back legs I think it was um, it that sounds like I cut its leg I didn't cut its leg I just cut the fur on its leg so I could tell which one it was when I had a full litter of blue kittens um, so you can do that you can do that um, another thing that you can do and this one comes with a story so uh, a friend of mine does this and um, he loves he loves it. It works really well for him. He tends to have a lot more of the same color litters than I do. Um, he had a kitten that was, um, it was born with a hernia, a little tiny baby kitten born with a hernia. And he lives in a regional area in WA. And so the kitten needed to have surgery um, and it needed to go back to be checked up before it could go back home again. And of course that would mean he'd have to make several trips to Perth for this kitten. So I said, well, I'll, I'll do it for you. So he bought the kitten and um, I met him halfway and we um, took the kitten, I took the kitten and the mum and the other kittens. And then I took them into the vets and the vets did the surgery here in Perth. And then um, I took them back again later to have a checkup. And then he was able to come and, and get them and take them home. So I was doing him a favor and that was fine, didn't mind. And it was really great because his vet was able to stitch the kitten up and saved it. So sometimes with an umbilical hernia, they, the kittens are born with their stomachs sort of open and their intestines can poke out. And that's what was happening with this kitten. So he needed to be stitched up and it was, a, you know, like a couple of days old kitten, that's crazy surgery, but the, the vet was great and managed to do it. Anyway, so when this kitten arrived, um, I took them into um, the ensuite bathroom in our guest room and I got them out and I was putting them out so that the mum was there and I was just checking they're all okay. And I just wanted to check this little kitten because he had a little bandage on. And I grabbed him out and I thought, oh my God, there's something wrong with this kitten. There's something wrong with this kitten. What's it got on its feet? Oh my God, what have I done? Have I, oh, have I, have I left something in there that it's got its feet stuck in? What's going on? It's, its feet were, its claws were just yellow yellow and I was like I don't know what this is it's this and I contacted the owner and I said I, I don't know what's going on the kittens have got really yellow feet and he said oh no that's nail polish <laughs> so his way of marking his kittens is to use nail polish on their little paw their little claws so they get a little pedicure and his um, daughter obviously had some random colors of nail polish, including yellow. So it, it looked really weird. It looked really weird. But I think when I looked closer, there was a couple of other colors on there. Now, this will work really well if you've got a lot of colors of nail polish. It's not going to work so well if you are maybe just got red and dark red, maybe pink. They might look a bit too similar. Um, I own a beauty spa here in Perth. And I think at last count, we had a about 150 nail polishes. So out there, I'm sure I've got a random assortment of colors that do fine. I've got a blue, I've got a green, I've got a red, I've got a yellow, I've got everything. I don't think I'd use yellow because seeing that kitten, it didn't look too good. Anyway, the little kitten, he went and had the treatment and the surgery and he just ended up, you know, perfect. It was really good and um, all taken care of. But that's how we could tell those kittens apart. Now I knew which one was the sick one because he had something, you know, he had an umbilical hernia and he had a poking out bit of his stomach and he had a band-aid on it. Um, but um, if I didn't have that, I'd know which one it was because I'd be able to know it was the one with the yellow feet. 
So that's an idea that you can use as well. You do need to reapply it, it will come off. Mum will clean them and, it, and it'll come off. Um, and that, But it's a good one for while you're doing weighing them or something. And maybe you could just do it on one foot if you wanted to. Um, doing it on a couple of feet means that you've got more chance of when it starts to wear off that you'll still know which one's which, which is important if you do need to know the difference. For this example, it might have been the case, I, I actually can't remember whether it was or it wasn't, but maybe this kitten might have needed to have some medicine ongoing and so you would want to make sure that you're giving the medicine to the right kitten but you don't want to separate that kitten from the other kitten so you would mark it in some way so you know you're giving it to that one. So that's um, something else you can do. So you can clip a bit of fur, you can put a bit of nail polish on them or you can do what I like to do and what I like to do is I like to get a Sharpie texture, nice black Sharpie texture and I like to put a mark in their ears. And what I'll do is if I have, um, get my little piece of paper or whatever I'm making a note on, and I'll make a note that um, left ear dot is this kitten, right ear dot is that kitten, or maybe cross is that kitten, or maybe dot and cross left ear is this kitten, or maybe um, two crosses in one ear is another kitten. So I'll use that and I'll make a big dot and a big cross or whatever I'm marking in that kitten's ear in black Sharpie texture. And depending on, how, you can make it pretty big. Um, you can actually sometimes see it while the kitten's walking around. So you'll know which one it is just to look at the kitten. As, this is in bigger kittens when they're walking around. Um, and that's the way I like to do it so that I've got it marked there. Now again, if mum's grooming them um, and just generally it'll wear off because it's skin and it wears off skin as you know from when you've had it on yourself, but it's quite, it's, it's fine. Um, and you can use different colours as well. I think I've used a red before as well. Um, and that's a really good way to tell them apart. So that's good if you need to know which one's which. And I tend to do that. I'll be doing that when they get to a certain age and when something they're reserved for one person versus another person. Then let's talk again about those um, little Velcro um, collars. Now I've got these at home. I've got them. Most um, people who've been breeding long enough have got them. They are good. Uh, they have a place. And the place is when you're going to the vets because I don't want to say to the vet okay the one with the cross in the ear is this and the one with the dot in the ear is that and the one with the red cross is this and the one with the blue cross is that what I want to say is um, red collar is this yellow collar is that green collar is that you need to make sure you put them on pretty tightly um, you need to put them on so that you can still fit your finger in the band but that it's on um, no looser than that because if they get them off then you still won't know um, and the vets won't know either. And what you, the reason you need to have them marked up to go to the vets for when they get de-sexed um, is because I, if you're like me, you get them microchipped then. And once they're microchipped, you 100% need to know which is which, especially if you don't have a chip reader. Uh, I once had kittens that I took to the vet and I had collars on them and for some reason they came home without their collars on them and they were both blue males and I did not know which was which. So I had to give one person um, the kitten and the information and say to them I'm I think this is your kitten I'm not sure I've got a 50 50 chance of having it right this is just the microchip not the whole kitten the deep the kitten was fine they hadn't chosen one or the other they were just coming to get a blue kitten and um, no they'd chosen the kitten I didn't know which microchip belonged to the kitten that's right so they'd chosen their kitten they came to get the kitten this is your kitten but I don't know if this is his microchip that's how it worked so I had to send them home like that and then I had to take the next one to the vet the next day and get him scanned so I could work out which one he was which would then tell me which one the other one was and then I'd have to swap stuff around if it was wrong. Luckily it was right so I had a 50-50 chance of getting it right and we did. I think that's around the time I also bought myself a microchip scanner. They are not that expensive to buy and that's a very good investment. But if you need to know when you go to the vets, you re I really do like it so that they can just put on the paperwork that they're sending back to me, red collar, blue collar, um, green collar, and then we know who's who. So that can be a really helpful thing. But then when they get home, because I've got the chip scanner, I'm pretty good to then take those collars off and then I'll, um, and that'll be fine. But it could be something like you might be, um, telling them that you want something in particular done with a kitten as well. Um, if I really don't recommend this, I don't recommend you take in, if you're getting three kittens de-sexed and one of them just vaccinated and microchipped because you're keeping it for breeding, don't take it in on the same visit. Don't take it in on the same visit because chances, you know, if somebody makes a mistake, that cat's getting de-sexed. That kitten's getting de-sexed. So don't tempt fate by doing that. So they're the things that I do to separate them out and identify them. I put 
crosses and dots and things in their ears and later on if I take them to the vets I will use the velcro collars in different colors but I don't leave them on the kittens permanently I don't use elastics because I'm just worried about mum eating them I don't use ribbons because I'm worried about both of them eating them the kittens or the mum eating them and I'm also worried about them getting stuck on things um, and you can do nail polish you can cut a bit of their fur out you could even use the sharpie textures to color in some of their toenails um, yeah, but if you have a litter, you know, if you have a litter of eight Russians and they're all blue, you've got to come up with something. You're going to have to mark them in some way, shape or form. Um, if you have a litter of four bicolors and they're each one's different color, you've got a chocolate, you've got a lilac, you've got a blue and you've got a black, then you're good to go. You know who's who. Um, it can be harder when you have... Uh, long-haired cats if you've got long-haired cats long-haired tabbies they the, it doesn't matter if they've got white because the white's often very diffused in mixed in with the um, long hair and the rest of the color so that's not such an easy way to tell them apart and you might have to do something then to mark them in some way so you know who's who but that's a little practical um, bit of advice there about keeping uh, being able to record which kittens which and mark them in a way that you know which is which when you need to know it and um, that's for weighing them that's for when people have chosen them that might be to give medication or it might be when you're going to the vets and getting them desex so that you can or microchips so that you can have their chips done oh just one more thing i do know some people actually get their microchips done before desexing i don't i get them done at the same time but i do know people who have someone come to their house and do their litters of kittens so they get all of their microchips done early and that way they they can use that as a way of identifying them so when someone comes over if they've microchipped them at eight weeks and someone comes over at 10 weeks and chooses a kitten they'll know which one it is because they can just scan it and then tell which one it is again it helps if you've got your own microchip scanner so a little bit of advice for you a little bit of practical advice today and i hope you found it useful um, i'd love you to subscribe and i'd love you to have a look at my stud cats mini course which is online now for 79 dollars, and you'll learn everything you ever needed to know about stud cats and i really hope you enjoy it i get some i'm getting some great feedback on it and i want more people to learn more about stud cats so that you can enjoy having them more and also so that they can have a better life okay bye for now Thanks for listening to the Cat Breeding for Beginners podcast. Make sure you visit my website at catbreedingforbeginners.com for lots more information. You can sign up to my email list and stay tuned as my Cat Breeding 101 online course is coming soon.